Welcome to Crack It. In this video, we are going to discuss on a commonly asked interview question, REST API design best practices. If you are a REST API developer, this question is likely to come up to you in your interviews, even if you are a beginner, intermediate or expert. So this question will be common to everyone. If you're looking to refresh your knowledge on enhancing the performance of your REST API, we have a dedicated video for uh, improving the performance of the REST APIs. I'll provide the link here. You can check it out if you want. So while developing our REST APIs, we need to be sure that to our resources, we need to provide the names as nouns and not as verbs. As we know, in the REST API, everything is resources. So we need to make sure that we should not use verbs in our endpoint parts. Instead, we always need to use nouns. So what should be that nouns? If suppose I'm going to create a product or if I'm going to select the product information or if I'm going to modify the product information. So for all these three things, I need to name my endpoint as slash products. So which is nothing but to identify the objects to which we are going to access or alter. So in my endpoint, I'm going to identify the objects related to the products or access, like access the uh, access the products or alter the products. So I need to give it as slash products and not slash get products or slash create products or slash update products. So we need to make sure that we should use nouns the resources. So we now know we need to use the nouns to our endpoints. Then we should be very sure that we should use the plural nouns to our endpoints. So if I'm going to fetch a specific product ID, then I should not name my uh, resource as slash product slash ID. It should always be slash products slash ID. Even if it is if I'm even if I'm not passing ID, it should be slash products and not slash product. So we need to use plural nouns to all our endpoints. We need to always version our APIs. For now, we may think that our API requirement will not change, but there is a chance that it may get changed in the future. So since we are working in Agile, there is a high chance that my client may come and ask me to change something. So for that, we need to make space for the enhancements and we need to make space in our API to support the backward compatibility as well, even after the new developments. So it's a very important that we need to version our APIs to support backward compatibility and to allow for future enhancements. So let's let's uh, talk about this example wherein I have a uh, I have a I have something for the uh, name of the client and uh, this is the original property name and they wanted to split it to first name and last name. So in this case, maybe we can create one more version, which is V2 and in the version two, we, we are creating these two new properties and in the version one, I still have name. It is because this specific thing will get uh, obsolete only after after few weeks or months. So till that time, I'm going to use name if if my uh, if my client is calling me with v1 and i'm going to respond them with first name and last name if my client is going to call me with v2 so we need to always version our api to support backward compatibility in this case supporting the backward compatibility is using just the name and to open up for the future enhancements and this is the future enhancements in our case so to support the future enhancements and to allow it for the uh, backward compatibility we need to version our api and our APIs may have different users and it's not mandatory that all the users has to use the same version. The same thing like this, suppose I may have client one and client two. So client one wants to use it as name and my client two wants to use it as first name and last name only always. So in that case, my client one will use the version one and my client two will use the version two. So for the different users, we need to be like, it's not mandatory that my API will have only one specific user. For different users, we can support different versions. Also, there are like multiple ways in which we can version our APIs that may be through the URL versioning like this or like this slash V1 or the custom header versioning where we can give add a custom header X hyphen API hyphen version. 
so there are many ways so uh, we have a separate video we have covered a separate video for rest api versioning in detail along with the interview questions related to the versioning so i'll i'll pin the link in the description and also i'll provide the link here if you want you can go through so next very important rest api design principle is maintaining good security practices in our application so whenever we develop an api it's not just developing the api it is also that we need to make our api secure so there is a chance that anyone any hacker or someone may access our api and they may get the information that we have in our api which we don't want so we need to make sure that our apis are secured properly security is a very important thing it's it's not like if we just develop the code so implementing the security is also the responsibility of the developer so we need to make sure that our client and the server information is secured so how can we do that how can we implement that security in our application we need to make sure that the communication between the client and the server is using the https channel which is a secure channel through which we need, we, we we made sure that the information sent or received is in a private channel also we need to uh, ensure that uh, ssl or the tls is uh, is present in our application to make sure that security is implemented also we can we can consider using authentication tokens we can use oauth uh, oauth for the role based access for the authentication and the authorization so we need to make sure that we need to implement security practices in our application so also we can implement rate limiting in our application so that we can limit the network traffic we will not allow the Uh, allow anyone to uh, down my api just because they they call they call my api 100 times or 200 times or million times so we need to make sure that we implement rate limiting in our application so uh, uh, we have a separate video which covers implementing jwt uh, implementation in the spring security we have a separate crew crash course for that so i'll provide the link in the description you can if you want you can go through that similarly we have one video for the implementation of this rate limiting in the spring spring video so i'll provide that link as well you can go through that if you want so we we have covered all these as a separate videos in detail in our uh, crack at youtube channel in this channel so the next very important aspect is handling the errors properly in the application and returning the standard http error codes so it's super important that we need to handle our errors properly in, in our application if some production issue happens we need to we will be able to trace what the issue has happened so that tracing or that analyzing we will be able to do it successfully only if we handle the errors properly in our application so it's super important that we need to handle the errors properly in our application and we need to return the standard http error codes so uh, if 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 there is something related to the client error codes which is if if my client is sending me a wrong request or if my client request is wrong i need to make sure that i i am returning them the 4xx error codes so that only by just seeing the http error codes like we we will know what exactly the issue had happened if it is like uh, we need to return them 401 unauthorized or we need to return them uh, 403 forbidden if they don't have if they don't have access to it we need to return them 404 not found if 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 suppose i have created an employee api and they are sending me the employee id which doesn't exist in my database which doesn't present in the server then i need to return them 404 not found similarly i they are uh, i have I only get post and patch methods implemented in my application, and if they are sending he head to me, I need to tell them that uh, method not allowed. So on by just seeing the status code itself, they need to know what the issue had happened at least on the high level. So we all these can be done only if we have implemented uh, implemented the proper error handling in our application. and if we return the standard http error codes so for the success responses we need to make sure that we are returning 2xx codes 200 okay if we created something if that is a post request we need to return them 201 created if that is an asynchronous request wherein we are just accepting the uh, request and we will process it later so we need to let the client know that your request is accepted in that case we need to send them 202 and 204 for no content so the request uh, that you have Sent a success. 
but i don't have anything to return to you so in that scenarios we need to return 204 no content so we need to make sure that we are returning a standard http error code similarly for the apis if i have if i had that api but i have permanently or temporarily redirected it we i need to return them with 301 or 302 correspondingly so for the server side issues so from my server side if there is some timeout issue i need to return them 504 gateway timeout if there if the service is not available i need to return them 503 service and available likewise i need to uh, return them the proper standard http error codes this should have this should be that this is a very important factor and i need to implement that factor in my application so the next one is also related to the errors we need to make sure that we are using consistent error messages so any of the error messages that is going out of my uh, api i need to make sure that the error response is same and it is easy to understand for the users so if i just written the http uh, status codes like just a 400 or the just the 500 it is not enough for the users to understand what went wrong so we need to make sure that we are creating a proper error response in our application and we need to include all the uh, all the information that is related to the errors all the details related to the errors so we need to include the error code we need to include the error messages error context and error links if we had anything if we have anything so we need to make sure that any error that is going out of my api or that is going out of my application has only one response and that response is the error response and that format of the responses like including the error codes error messages error context and error links so the value to these fields may change but my error response should always have these fields or few of the fields so whichever error response that you want to return from your application but that should be consistent that should be the same always so next important best practice that we need to follow in our rest apis is implementing pagination in our application so if my api needs to return a huge data it's need to return a lot of data then it is always best to use the pagination to improve the performance it is because with pagination if suppose i am allowing 10 records in a single page for, for that specific get request my api will query only those 10 records and not the entire like um, uh, 200 or 300 records which my api needs to return so if suppose i have pagination implemented and i want to return only 10 records my api will my fetch query only the 10 records in the database but there may be a chance that that actual api may have 200 records but in a single page it will return only 10 records so it will return only 10 records so which may improve the performance of the api so it's always good that you need to implement pagination in our AP, in your api if you need to return a lot of data then the next uh, important principle in the rest one of the one of the best principles of the rest is connectedness that is via the hypermedia links so if we have pagination implemented let's let's analyze this response you can see that we, you, you can see that it is more self descriptive and it is returning the links in the response so you can see that the you can see that the a this is the response from the products api and it is returning the page number five and the number of records in a single page is 20 and if you want to go to the first page it's like very easy if you just click the link um, our api will go to that first page if you want the previous page if you want the next page if you want the last page so all those information meta information about the links or the about the pages or present this is a very important principle in the rest which is nothing but the connectedness via the hypermedia links so if we have pagination implemented in our application it is obvious that your collections will return a response that supports the pagination like first last next and previous which will be beneficial to the users so the next aspect is filtering and sorting so if in the pagination if you remember we are improving the uh, performance of the application how we are just uh, querying those 20 records or those 30 records which is required for a single page likewise we can improve the performance of the application by filtering the data so how are we going to filter so there is an api and that api needs to let's assume 
leads to query uh, query those products whose name is starting with letter p1 let's assume so in those case what we can do is we can apply a filter by adding a request parameter in our application so if this if that request parameter is available and the request parameter name will be product name and if that product name starts with p1 we can return the data so instead of returning 200 records there we will return only those records to which uh, the products are starting by the name p1 so with this filtering what are we doing we are eliminating the un unwanted data by eliminating the unwanted data what are we doing we are uh, we are uh, it's it's very important in terms of the bandwidth standpoint as well so uh filtering will also improve the performance of the application also the best uh, the rest api principles that support sorting so if we want to sort the data we can sort that data in the back back end itself in the queries itself it's like very simple and it's a it's it's that has to improve the performance in the aspect of the front end next very important rest api principle is implementing caching in our application so if uh, if we have implemented caching in our application if suppose a, a request is coming to the client instead of going to the database the data will be written from the caching itself so there are like two types of caching in memory caching and the distributed caching like redis cache so we you can implement whichever you want in the microservices application we will we will usually implement redis cache but if you have if you if you are okay to implement in memory cache as well yes you can well and good you can implement that as well in your application it's based upon your business requirements so if you implement caching in your application you can avoid the database call so by avoiding the specific database call you can improve the performance of your application so that the users can get the data faster also there are like uh, numerous headers that can be added to a response which will provide the information about your cache and those will be like cache control expires pragma and last modified so we can we can add these headers to your responses to provide more information about your cache so uh, if you want to know more about caching we have a dedicated video for caching and the implementation of spring redis cache with a code demonstration in our channel if you i will provide that here and as well as in the description if you are interested in caching you are welcome to watch it so next is documenting the apis for all the apis that you develop or or any api that you develop you need to make sure that you have documented your api properly so only if you document your api properly it will be useful for the users to access your endpoints properly or to identify what you have implemented to know what you have implemented and to provide a descriptive descriptive information about your apis so any api that you develop you need to document your api so you need to provide comprehensive documentation for your apis including the endpoints request response examples the query parameters that you have used what are the status codes that you are returning and each and everything about your apis you need to document those apis as per the guidelines also you can document your apis using the swaggers or the open api documentation that is that is completely of your choice but the best practice that you have to follow in your api development is documenting your apis next is monitoring so any application that we develop we will monitor that application it is because only like if if it goes to production and if if something happens wrong we need to have uh, the alerts set up for our application so we need to monitor our application continuously so that if any alert arises we can we can go see that issue quickly the production issue quickly so we need to make sure that the applications that we developed have implemented monitoring to identify any alerts or any issues that has happened in the production also this monitoring will also help to identify the issues easily and to improve the overall quality of our application yes that's true with 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 monitoring only we will be able to identify the issues so we need to implement monitoring as well for our application this is also one of the important rest api design practice that we should follow Look. So with this we came to the end of the video we have covered all the rest api design principles that we need to follow in our application so thanks for watching crack it if you like the video please like comment share and subscribe and stay tuned for the updates please refer it to your friends who are preparing for the interviews